lot. So, we're starting episode three. And would you like to introduce yourself today? Um, my name's James Zuniga. James Nipper Zuniga, owner of Nipper's Clippers Barber Shop and owner of Chicano Barber Chicano Company. Chicano Barber. Dope. Um, and and uh, um, Artificial Church Outlet Landscaping Company. Cool. So you're barbering and you have your Chicano Barber brand and you have a landscape company? Yeah, that's that's actually what? why I told you I had to be out of here by two because I had to go to a seminar for the, lands, for the landscaping business too. How dope is yeah. that? So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you started with the whole um, barber situation? Um, it, it well, it was in the early. It was it was about 1996. I just had my first daughter, and uh, I was I think I was painting at the time, and uh, I like I really I always, I needed a haircut every week, and then I also had a, I had a bad drug habit. Bad drug habit. I was like a dopey for like 20 years. And um, but I doesn't matter how much dope I smoked, I always wanted to look good, and I always wanted I needed to have a haircut every week, right? And um, I used to go to this one barber shop, and her name's Nancy Coda. She cause she cuts out of uh, Fillmore, California, still. They well, they, it was a neighborhood barber shop in Moore Park. And I used to go. Uh, I used to go ch- ch- check her temperature once in a while and ask her, "Well, so how do you do this? And how do you do this?" And she used to give me little secrets. So eventually, since I had all these problems and I I didn't want to spend my fifteen bucks to go get a haircut, and I just had a daughter and I needed diapers and all that other stuff, and I also needed to get a crack rock. I would start. I started learning how to cut my hair with the little secrets that they were telling me. And I got pretty good at at it. I would say about ninety seven. I was really, I was really good at it. And, and all the neighborhood homeboys were like, "Hey, homes, can you get my hair? Can you hook me up? Yours looks nice. Make mine look nice." And that was that was always I was doing that after work. So I was do, this time. I think about ninety seven. I was doing landscaping. So I would go to do landscaping, and on Friday we would go get primed up. They would come up five dollars. And a twelve pack, or a, a, back then it was like cases. They didn't have eighteen packs yet, and uh, they would just show up to the pad. And I lived at the end of the end of end of a road, <coughs> eight nine nine Valley Road, the notorious eight nine nine Valley Road. Um, and uh, so all the cars would be parked down the street. We just I'd cut hair. I put the barber chair out my out my big window because I was I was staying in a I was staying in my grandma's garage. It was kind of like a like a like a suite. Like a studio, and I would open up the big, the big bay window and put my barber chair out there. Let's put the jams on, and then we just party right down the side of the what? house. And I'd cut hair, and it was it was cool, I man. I can just picture that, you know, like a little neighborhood. You're like, in, was it like a garage kind of thing? It was an old garage that it turned into a room, into a, a a really nice room too. So, and the window was probably about as big as this one that we're sitting up against. And I would just put the I had a, I had an old salon chair. I would put right outside <laughs> the window and crack the window. We have the jams and. And then some of them, we even had a little basketball court right there. There some of the bots to play hoops or it was just a good time. So I'd cut into about nine o'clock at night and we everybody would be primed up, you know, they would be all ready to go back and them as we're ready to go for the night after they left. Just so party and bullshit. Party, huh? party and bullshit, get a haircut. Just like And it was that was probably the funnest that was that was a very good time. I should've I shouldn't I should uh, that could have went on forever. It could have went on forever and then uh, there was this uh one of the one of the homegirls from the neighborhood, her mom owned a, owned a salon, a virus. And she came up one day. I don't know why she she went up there to go talk to somebody. And I, and I just bullshit. And I go, hey, would your mom let me get a, would your mom hook me up with a chair? I didn't have a license or nothing. Uh-huh. I go, after I do my construction stuff, I can go over there. Ten minutes later, ten minutes later after she left, man, she calls me. Goes, my, dad says, my mom says, when do you want to start? I said, I'll start this weekend. So after I went over there, I, I, I sh- the homeboys didn't want to go. So nobody followed me over there because <laughs> they didn't want to play full prices. They, oh, and they couldn't take their beer. Okay. So, you know, that went on. And then, you know, we can go keep on going on. But I, So you started at a salon pretty much. I started cutting in the side of the house. And then I ended up at a salon for about a year. Mm-hmm. And, then I, and then after that, I was like, you know what? This, this, this ain't for me. And I and then I ended up uh, and then my drug habit got a lot bad. It got it got worse. So I left there. I went back. I was back still at my grandma's house, and I was just uh, cutting hair. Um, regardless how bad my drug habit was, I still went to work and the construction. And I still had 
haircuts I would cut. So you pretty much had two jobs. I had how, two, how old were you at this time? I was probably about uh, about 24 at this time. When I started when I was 20, so I was about 24, and then 24 to about 26. So you were doing landscaping, you were doing barbering, and I like how you say like you had a drug problem. Mm -hmm. So technically, you 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 kind of use this as a way out. You say, do you think it made that type of impact in your life to well, really leave that I, stuff behind? That cutting hair was actually a way that it helped me feed my drug habit because I would cut hair and they would and they would hook me up. You know what I, I would I, I didn't I didn't have to pay for drugs. The, um, kind of like an exchange type of yeah. thing, like hey, you know, a haircut for a little something. I got pretty good at it. I got really good that I was cutting around. I, I was cutting a lot of the neighborhood uh, surrounding neighborhoods. So I was cutting hair from it was from Oxnard, Santa Paula, Fillmore. Camarillo, Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks. I was cutting different people from different areas. And then... Uh, and this was in California, this right? This is in California. 1996, in 19, that's when 90, you started. 96, and then, and then about the 2000s, I was just cutting hair everywhere. Um, and I would have people come in from San Fernando Valley. They would drive a half hour just to get a haircut. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's in, the, in the backyard. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is how really... So, when I when when I came out here, I came out here because it was it was the early two thousand nine when the when the the market took a took a crash and everything and there was nothing going on in California for me no more, and my wife was my wife at the my wife now, we have a twelve year old uh, uh we have a sixteen year old daughter excuse me, and she moved out here on a on a separation when we were separated, and it came to that time she they she kind of goes. Why don't you come out to Arizona? She's gonna say I told her. She's she gonna say I <laughs> asked to come out here. here. Yeah. Or you but wanted she, to yeah, come I want to come out. But I, I think it's the other way around. <laughs> she asked you to come out here. Yeah, and that's how you ended up. She goes, here. come out here and see if you can make it work. And I did. And it was probably it is, and it's the been the best decision I've ever made in my life. Because as soon as I got out here, I didn't have much. All I had was whatever was in my dually. And at this time, I was I was already off drugs. Okay. I cleaned myself with like. Uh, 2000, 2003, but I, um, so I get out here and I'm, uh, well, before I left, I was doing masonry work. I'm a, I'm a mason by trade, a block mason by okay. trade. Okay. So I, oh, no, I'll get to that later, but so I, I get out here and, and there's nothing going on here, out here too, because it's just as bad as California because nobody's working. And I used to make $23 an hour out there. And then I finally get a job out here, and I'm making ten dollars an hour, and it's like that, August, and that's it's a, a huge difference. That's and like it's hot. hot. <laughs> You're like fuck this <laughs> shit is hot as fuck. But the funny thing is, I we bought a house a month before. I didn't even have a job when we bought a house, and, but we got the house for cheap because it was the market was all messed up. Yeah. If I didn't have that house, I probably would have ran back to California because no that way. fucking heat scared the shit out of me. <laughs> He's like, but I had I, I was here. I had a commitment. I had my wife. My, she was my wife. She's just my girlfriend, and I had my daughter, and we had a new house. So I went. I did the ten dollar an hour job for like three Damn. months. Then I got a call from another home. He goes, "Hey, listen, we're scrapping out houses over here. Why don't you come work over here and you'll be getting more, more money?" So I started scrapping out houses. I scrapped, scrapped out houses for two years. And at the same time, I'm starting to cut some of the workers that I'm working with. We go to a house, we're okay. scrapping them out, and we're going to the pat little patio. We have time. I'll cut, cut them up real, real quick. quick. Like yeah. the, no, you know, it's like you don't need to have a perfect space. Like wherever I can cut wherever. your hair, that's where I'm going to make some money. Power, if there's power that's, in this house, yeah. we found a little old cha a chair, and I always carried my little black bag. My little black bag always had, I still have my, the, my original clippers. I, they're, they're all painted now, looking all nice and pretty. But but those but those uh, those original clippers, I still I carried them everywhere, mm -hmm. I, and they're in a case at the at the you, shop. You say you got like an emotional attachment yeah, because of. Yeah, I, we can't hear the the mic. <clears throat> Hello, oh, there, there we go. Goes, there it goes. So. So I did that, and then it came. Then I got we got I got a laid off two years later, and so my wife goes, okay, you need okay. My wife's been in the hair business as well, as long as I've been cutting hair, but she's been doing it with a license for over twenty years. Oh, so your wife's also she's my, in. She's my in wife the, also is in the hair business. Oh, she owns cool. she owns four five shops. She owns well, she has a hair salon by her, that she owns herself, and then she has four other one in Lidge, four others in Lidgefield Park that she has 
uh, three other partners with. So you would say it's like a power couple type of thing. It's it. She she she's she's a she's badass. She's I mean it's she's a dope. strong woman and she's a she's a she's a hustler. So it gets to the point where she goes, "You need a career. What are you gonna do with yourself? You gonna go get a contractor's license or are you gonna go?" Get your barber license. And I remember <laughs> this is what I said. It's hot here. <laughs> You're like, no, fuck that. I'm going to go back to barbering. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go inside where, where there's air conditioner because it's hot over here. Dang. So I did that. I ended up getting my license in, um, I say, uh, 2000. Uh, what are we in? 2000, about 2009. So before all that time. Uh, no, 210. 210. You were just kind of doing it on the side. It wasn't nothing serious for you. Oh, I just did it on the side because well, I don't. It's it, it, it's in my blood. My grandpa was a barber. Oh, my grandma used to cut hair too. My grandma that I used to live with, she used to cut hair. She used to cut a lot of the because we we had almost like a. Uh, it was a house where people that came over from the border, a lot of them would go stay with my grandma. She would that's give them housing dope. and shit. That's so she would dope. she would help them out and cut their hair and stuff like that. Oh, that's and tight. then my grandpa worked in a barber shop in. Uh, and Baldwin Park, uh, yeah, West Covina. I Baldwin Park. <laughs> West Covina. Um, so it was kind of in my blood, but it was just something that I, I didn't think I was, I was going to make a, a, a career out of it. I didn't oh, think I was going to be at this, get this far in life with it. And uh, when she said, you need a career, and I said, went to barber school, it all fell into place. And it, it only makes sense. You know, she's into the same business that mm-hmm. I'm doing, and, and, and we, 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 it all clicks together. Yeah. So once I did that and I got in, I got it. I got out of school. <clears throat> Listen, I was I was gonna just start just cut hair out of my house. I worked mm-hmm. at this one shop. I'm not gonna say any names, but I worked at this one shop where I met some good people at. But I was like, if this is cutting hair and this this is a this is how it's supposed to be, I'm out of this stuff. Oh, I'm a, you didn't like it. I you didn't, didn't like, like the it. Industry? Okay. I didn't like it. But I'm a uh, but uh, a homeboy Dino Dino Atola Madre Dino Acosta from Atola Madre Car Club. He hit me up one day and he says, "Hey man, I know a barber shop that you would you would fit in real nice, and it's more than your style." Let me let me go talk to the guy. I said, "All right." He gets back at me about a month later. He goes, "James, call him up. He's they need a barber right now." I said, "All right." So I called him up and it was Danny from Danny from uh, Straight Razor Barber Shop. Okay. And that was it. Once I got into that shop, I said, "This is where I'm supposed to be," and this you, is what. Yeah, this you is fell in this love is, with is the it. Craft. Th- Would you mind talking about what was the things that you didn't like that you saw in that shop? It was slow. It was slow. I didn't know nobody in the area, so because I, I didn't know a lot of people out here yet, so it was slow. I didn't have enough clientele. I didn't like the way it was set up. It looked like a little like I went to work in a little boy's. Bedroom. Oh, I was not. I was. It just. And it wasn't. The, it, it was just. It just. It was. The environment. The environment. You know, the people were cool, but just the environment, just the way it was set up. I was like, this is not. This is not a for kind you, of right? Embarrassing. Well, uh, what about how was uh? Well, how was your pay set up? Were you renting a booth or were you on? I was renting. No, I was renting a booth too. So that's what made it even harder that yeah. you didn't have a clientele. It was a slow shop. It and, was. Yeah. And. You were just not making any money. Exactly. Oh man. Exactly. That sucks. And it was just not it wasn't just it wasn't in the it weren't into the circle of people that I was excuse me. That you wanted that I wanted that uh, that I'm that I'm I'm in, that I'm that who who You didn't feel comfortable, you're saying. And you know what? I like that you touched that part because there's a lot of people that feel like an outsider, like they don't it and it's it's crazy because you just think, oh, just go to work. Don't ma- don't worry about what people have to say and stuff. But it's a huge deal because you're in a shop 10, 12 hours a day. And if you're not feeling comfortable, you're, you're not putting out you're, good work. Yeah. And then you're not happy. You're just taking it and pissed off at everybody. Mm-hmm. And the thing I was, I don't know, I, I was tired of doing the same haircuts. It was a, it was a two in skin. Oh, shit. Everybody wanted a two in skin. I said, this is not, I'm not growing here. Exactly. Um, you feel stuck. You stuck. Uh. And it would just get bored of the haircut. And I was like, man. Um, so that's when the homie let me get Danny. Danny went to work with Danny, and I the pumps were going on right there, side oh, parts, flat top, top. man. And it gave you a little bit more yeah, action, we, a little more color. Yeah, like. man, we got music. <laughs> okay, this is James from Nippers Clippers Barbershop, and we are behind the chair with Carla Leon.